Good morning, traders. Welcome to the Flow Show, back from our little bank holiday yesterday. Uh, ready to get stuck into things. The last week of uh, the UK, little Europe summer holidays as well. So then we're going to be back with a bang from next week, but uh, still some stuff to get through this week. Anyway, morning, Kay. How you doing, mate? Morning, Ryan. Morning, everybody. Yeah, I'm doing. Uh, I'm doing fine, mate. I'm doing fine. Good, good. Navigating Powell and everything uh, okay last week? I'm sorry? Navigating Powell and everything last week oh, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the pound is doing uh, is doing really nice things, right? Um, as I said, I mean, we are in, in full UK exceptionalism. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's enjoy it while it lasts. Exactly, as long as it lasts, as long as it lasts. Uh, just before we kick off, you'll notice there on the screen uh, the Trader Coaching website. Uh, if you wanted to have a one-on-one -on -one session with uh, K-Man or myself or any of the other members of the team pictured there, you can do so. Don't forget, you can get 40% off your first session with uh, any of the coaches you choose. So you can take advantage of that. But anyway, let's uh, get stuck into things and see what's going on. I'm uh, going to start with a bit of data out of Japan overnight. A um, bit of softness in the corporate PPI index coming in at 2.8% lower than the 2.9 expected and 3.1 prior, which was revised up. Um, also, this uh, Bank of Japan, they've got a core CPI measure out that came in softer than expected as well, 1.8% versus 2.1% expected and prior. Um, don't know if uh, market's really paying attention to that number exactly, but uh, still a little bit of a soft one when uh, you would be or they would be hoping to keep the numbers up around uh, that two percent target. Um, any thoughts on uh, that data, mate? Well, first of all, that that BOJ core CPI is X food and energy, and those are the two things that that are uh, that are keeping the rest of the CPI data up. So um, yeah, okay, there, there's probably a bit of um, housing in there as well. Um, <laughs> no, I'd say really, yeah. I mean, they could use it as a, as an excuse for something, but Ueda having been relatively hawkish and. Uh, uh, brushing any uh, complaints uh, under the carpet uh, uh, regarding the route in yen and things, um, I, I don't think it changes the the, the overall picture much uh, right now. Yep, I, I'd rather I'd rather look at the um, the other number than the PPI. Yeah, if if that continues to come down, that may be uh, that may be a more interesting one because that englobes a lot of stuff that is. Uh, directly related to the day-to-day uh, -day life as well. So um, that may yeah. be actually a more interesting one right now, but it's still well above their 2%. So um, I'd say all in all, move on. Yeah, very much so. That, that PPI number, well, it's, it's a weird one. It's the corporate services PPI. So it's, it's not like manufacturing and that sort of stuff. No. Bit of a weird number, that one, um, to get your head around. But uh, just follow the trends, probably the way forward. Right. Uh, moving on to the Ricks Bank, they had their minutes out yesterday. <clears throat> so we got uh, the various voices giving us their be all and end all. Uh, Janssen said he would back larger cuts if new information supports it. Uh, Bunya said can cut rates at somewhat faster pace than seen in June. Uh, had a moan up about the uh, SEK exchange rate is somewhat weaker than they are forecasting. And then, uh, so there's a bit of a battle between the Doves and the Hawks. Uh, Thieden said there's no reason for larger individual cuts. Bremen said 25 pit cuts are well-balanced monetary policy and gradual moves are more predictable for households. So a little bit of a split there in uh, the Rick's Bank over whether they should go for bigger cuts. Uh, so that's the territory we're getting into with a lot of these central banks at the moment, not whether they're cutting, but how big they're going to be. Uh, Germany had some data out as well. Uh, we had the IFO uh, business business climate in uh, I can't even say it, business climate index uh, for August. And going the other way of what we saw from the uh, zoo report, a uh, bit of a gain in the headline number um, to eighty six point. Uh, sorry, eighty six. What's that? I can't even read it. Eighty five point 
six, sorry, uh, higher than expected. Also, current conditions coming in, confirming uh, a little dip from the 87.1, but expectations as well also shown in the green. So a little bit better there from uh, these German numbers, as I say, compared to uh, the last zoo report anyway. Um, the only data of note from the US yesterday was durable goods, uh, which came in on the headline number A, Healthy 9.9%, but we did have a big down move last month. So big expectations, as usual, a lot of uh, big ticket items seems to be what's been uh, going on in there. Transport, manufacturing, capital goods all had big turns around. Uh, for example, transport equipment rose 35% versus a drop of 21%. Um, so there's some pretty big swings in that. Um, the... Uh, the core goods, if you like to call them that, which is uh, Capital Goods Orders Non-Defence X Air, that came in at, 0, at minus 0.1%. Uh, so that uh, makes it from the consumer side at least a little bit uh, softer looking on those numbers. A couple of Fed heads have been out. Uh, they're all starting to uh, get around the uh, PAL chair, shall we say. Barkin says current low hiring, low firing approach firms are currently taking to employment is unlikely to persist uh, the risk of firms resorting to layoffs uh, grows if the economy weakens it says disinflation has spread beyond goods to the rest of the econ economy boosting confidence it will continue so he's uh, sitting on the fence looking potentially for this low hiring to switch to firing uh, feds daily has had a bit of a change as well. Says it's hard to imagine that anything could derail a rate cut in September. The time to adjust policy is upon us, taking Powell's line there. Um, it's too early to know the size of rate cuts, but says it's reasonable to adjust policy at a normal cadence if the economy develops as expected. Uh, doesn't want to keep making policy tighter as inflation comes down. Says the labour market is in complete balance. Uh, and not seeing any signs of abrupt weakening. Uh, again, not hearing signs that firms are paused for layoffs. Um, okay, just going down to the, the, the power oh. stuff. Um, it's nailed on pretty much, isn't it, now, the cut, oh, yeah. um, likely for September. We've got PCE this week, but uh, I don't think that's going to derail it at all. Um, nope. Really, all we're looking from... from sort of fresh our eyes is that uh, we're just going to be playing with it's going to be 25 or 50. Well, that's exactly what I've said over the shows, Ryan, while you were off um, a couple of days. The the, the next uh, employment report is probably going to be the decider whether we do 25 or 50. Um, and, and listening to what Powell said, he's now like, they seem to be relatively happy with uh, what inflation is doing and uh, where it's heading to, although um, the usual... Um, bumpy could be bumpy uh, warnings which which is possible even if uh, it's going it's taking the direction um and and we've not seen and that will take time and i don't think the the move has been big enough although if you look at the the yen of course it's been a, it's been a huge move on the dollar but um whether that whether the weaker dollar will have an impact on inflation i think that's going to have to wait a few months um, but I, yeah, I mean, it's the, the next jobs report is going to decide whether we get twenty five or fifty, and uh, that's uh, that is how um, how I look at it and uh, how I potentially plan to plan to trade it. Get a get a very weak one, um, then I think we may have a bit of a remake of twenty twenty three. Even though the dollar is now already weaker, where it was stronger going into the last quarter uh, last year, but um, if if yeah, if that jobs report is weak, then uh, we may see a weaker dollar uh, all the way to year end, you know, and uh, and we may get that 50, uh, 50 piece cut. But until then, my base case for now is it's going to be in increments of 25s and, and, unless the jobs market completely, um, completely drops away. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to agree with that. Um, I'm going to play a bit of devil's advocate here and uh, <clears throat> a bit of a spoiler because I've just done the the trade-off with, with Michael Brown, and I, I said the same thing as well. It's all obviously all the focus on the jobs market, but and the jobs market weakening doesn't necessarily mean that the economy is weakening that much. Obviously, it is an indication if 
jobs are being lost. That suggests weakness. But if you take everything at, at face value, still strong GDP growth. The Fed cutting rates against the job market doesn't affect the jobs market per se. Okay, It affects the economy, not the jobs market. Now, by definition, strong economy equals strong jobs. I guess what I'm getting at is even if we do see a weak it, 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 jobs market, is that not just a bit of a pullback from the strength it's shown since COVID? Um, should we not expect it to go the other way for a little bit to, to come into better balance? So if, if we see a stinky NFP, what's a 25 or 50 pip cut going to do to it? It's not going to change it from, from the next month. No, but it, uh, no, 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 but, but, well, I mean, that is, that is obviously there's, there's, there's not one side to, to, to everything. Um, but uh, where I would say is that um, for the, for the value of the dollar, a, a weaker jobs report is probably going to, um, to get the market um, betting on, betting on at least one, uh, also 50, 50 BPs. And we know that it affects the value of the dollar. So whether it's, the case of um, weighing or, or or impacting the economy or the jobs market directly, we have seen that big revision. So that means that the BLS numbers have always been overstated, um, which was already showing in the household uh, in the household uh, uh, numbers. Right? Um, no, I think the the impact, whether it's whether you have like. 2% growth like we've seen yesterday on the on the now cast or whatever um it, it's the dynamism in the in the uh, in the US economy and and there your job market is is probably more important than than doing a 25 or 50 bps cut well which will be the result of so um whether it has a direct impact on the on the on the economy or not may not be that important for um for an investor the investor will see like are the bonds going up or down on on, on a 50 bps uh, cut and do we do we want to keep dollars if uh, if the fed is um is cutting now faster than uh, than for instance the uh, the ecb or or the bank of england just to name those two and um that that's where it'll it'll affect the 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 currency right and um yeah, the market has this bone, uh, this bone <laughs> between uh, between the teeth, and um, it affects so much, so many things. The, the what the Fed is doing that, um, yeah, I, the direct impacts may not be as important as the impact for us, for what else are, are concerned, of course, uh, on on the currency. And now, I'm going to go come your way. How much has the market already traded of it? That that is going to be. The question with to which we will probably have an answer on the next uh, jobs report yeah no i, I think i agree with that we, we've seen we've potentially got a, a bit of a last hurrah in the dollar um potentially i say um after you know pal confirmed what the market's been chasing all year um and it might be the same with the jobs market the first bad jobs number may be the worst market reaction um if the jobs market is turning sour um, but i think that the risk is that the mark that the market and everyone gets too hyped up about jobs and rate cuts, tying them together. You know, if the jobs market is going to turn, it's probably going to trend lower. OK, so even if they do start cutting rates, it's not going to turn things around for months. Um, you know, you don't cut rates and then someone who was just about to sack someone turns around and goes, oh, we, we've got 25 pick rate cut. I'm not going to sack anyone. I'm going to start hiring. That's not the way it works. So I'm just I guess I'm just urging caution against tying rate cuts to what happens in the jobs market uh, no, yeah time. yeah but the thing the thing is as well ryan and and what comes in uh, in the market now recall we have been talking about it and i've been saying like okay that second half of the year we will probably see uh start to see a a, a clearer and 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 actually we have to and and whatever the market thinks about powell and and that's what i always say like i mean to me a central banker is a central banker okay Bailey is a special is a special case, but a central banker is a central banker. I I I'm not going to say they're wrong or they're they're right. They they just we we react to what they do, which could be a good thing or a mistake, you know. And um, it yeah. it has to be said that Powell has been warning since uh, what is it somewhere in May or June 
uh, June, I think, uh, uh, during a, an ECB uh, thing, that that he he saw things weakening, and he has been saying that they will support the the a weaker jobs market or try to support um, the economy by by then uh, by then reacting. And now we we're coming around to that. So, um, yeah, there there is. There is probably going to be a big reaction if uh, if if we get that weak jobs uh, jobs report and and repricing again of expectations because I think right now we are not expecting uh, not overly expecting the fifty BP cut it may may gone up a little bit again but uh, we're still we're still only at about thirty percent or so um, expected for a fifty that that is probably going to be impacted by the next uh, jobs report. Then. Yeah, I think so. And it could just be a bit of arse covering, you know, keeping 50s on the table covers their arse. Um, if the jobs market doesn't uh, collapse as expected, then they can just uh, mm. cut at a more varied rate. So, mm. again, this goes back to uh, how they got caught out with inflation rising previously and having to hike fast. Now they want to make sure they don't make the same mistake on the way down by limiting their options uh, again. So, anyway, there's the uh, the rate expectations now so uh yeah 28 percent chance actually, of a cut no i'm actually surprised we're back down to 28 because we went up like to 33 35 or so on the, on those big revisions that we saw oh well the uh the fastest call were jobs revisions mm. that was hilarious. that was uh funny last week uh anyway i'm getting to that um right let's move on anyway um got some uh geopolitical stuff to get on with uh france is still bumbling along um with a cobbled half government thing um they're just waiting to pick the uh pm or the premier whatever you want to call it uh le pen has so far rejected the left wing uh premium premier premier candidate uh, macron's yet to put his uh, own candidate forward, though he says he doesn't want uh, a left-wing person in charge. So that's still bumbling along. Um, I think they sort of cobbled together some sort of budget thing. Um, I don't know how that's going to stand up to scrutiny, but uh, anyway, that's still bubbling under the surface, uh, just bring that to your attention. Um, over in uh, Gaza, apparently progress has been made, or further progress has been made in the ceasefire talks, but there's work still to do according to a u.s official uh, pentagon spokesman says the threat of attack against israel by iran and its proxies still exists um russia has apparently stepped up its retaliation uh for this insurgent by ukraine um they've been sending tons of drones over uh into kiev and surrounding areas so they're stepping up things there and apparently uh zelensky is going to or has presented Biden with targets it could hit in Russia. Um, this is obviously they've already started hitting in Russia, but this is something that the West has been pretty much opposed to, uh, particularly using their supplied weapons to hit targets in Russia. Um, but uh, as we've been saying for the last couple of weeks, this is taking a little bit of a step up in hostilities. So uh, that risk is still bubbling around under the surface. Uh, China, uh, sorry, Canada is. Uh, pissing off the Chinese. They followed the US and slapped 100% tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles. Uh, China's Ministry of Commerce has urged Canada to immediately correct its wrongdoing. So uh, expect some further lines, perhaps from China, impacting any Canadian trade along the lines. Uh, that's it for a rather quiet Monday. Kay, uh, got anything you want to add? Oh uh, no! I think we've uh, we've covered most of uh, most of what's going on, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I hope. Anyway, uh, right. Let's get stuck into what some prices are doing. Um, I've been playing uh, pretty much a little bit of catch up. I was uh, trading on and off uh, throughout, uh, as you can see. Euro sterling there, my first chart, keeping an eye on that one because we've got a further breakdown. Um, this was a bit of a surprise to see it getting back under 85. I thought we might put up a bit of a fight on the move down, uh, although I'm not complaining. I'm still short and uh, I've just uh, slipped a bit off, as has Mr. K-Man. Um, so we are heading down to this 84 area once again, um, and I think we're probably going to get a test of it. Um, now, a lot of this, I think, is, and uh, Kay will correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of this is, again, that, speed between cable and euro dollar uh, i think he's doing for this at the moment 
Some of that might have to do with euro dollar hitting this big 112 level uh, that I've been banging on about for quite some time. Uh, let's put on a, uh, a weekly chart. So this is one of the uh, big, big levels that we've got up here that's had uh, plenty of action going back uh, many years. Um, so not a shock to see us uh, running into a brick wall here. As I say, cable still going, euro finding it a bit tougher, euro sterling benefiting uh, from that to the downside. So we might hit this uh, 84 level. And I'm in, I'm in two minds what to do down here. I'm obviously going to take uh, some of my shorts off uh, down here if we see it. But if we're down here because cable's still moving and uh, euro dollar stuck at 112, if I'm seeing around the dollar space, other dollar pairs legging up, breaking through highs, and euro dollar is looking the laggard, um, that potentially sets up a break, which might, in fact, solidify the support down here. So if cable, say, up at 133, Aussie dollars through 68, that sort of thing, but euro dollar can't get through that 112, um, then that's going to get there. But the more the dollar weakens, the more chance that euro dollar will catch up. <clears throat> and if that happens, it could be a big break of the euro dollar, which would put the brakes on a further move south here. So that's how I'm looking at this one. But this uh, this move up here in euro dollar, a big, big level break there. I'm sure uh, the rest of you guys have been looking at this uh, 61.8 fib. If we get over that, we're looking at this 115 level, which is another absolute monster. Um, as you can see, we're all the way back into the 1990s where this level has had the same things. So these are the big levels. These, This is going to indicate a break. I don't think for euro dollar we've quite got a break on yet. We've broken some of the range tops, 110, 111, but this 112 and particularly that fib is going to signify a proper break of this range that we've been playing here. And then we're looking at some big levels uh, to the upside. So that's what I'm looking at for that one anyway. <clears throat> uh, I still got a little morsel of uh, Kiwi dollar on. And again, we're not quite breaking. Um, we've got this zone up here into the 62 from 61, 90, 94s, whatever. Um so we've made the move above there. We're holding it. It's just come down to a short time zone. We're holding it as support. That's constructive. We're just starting to try and build some support here. We tried it the first time, failed, trying it a second time. If we manage to build support here, then we're going to get uh, potentially another leg higher and we're going to be pushing up to the high 62s, 63s. And that'll be a break of this 2024 range that we've been sitting in for quite some time. So there's lots of Pairs on the cusp of kicking on again. Uh, dollar CAD, another one uh, I got in short after we had this bounce back. I, I pulled all my orders while we had uh, all that mess with the revision and uh, power and everything. Um, but that bounce into 36, I put in my sell stop again, 3580s, and we've had a decent move. Again, we're just tapping around a, a zone down here. Um, it's done what I expected to. When we got a proper break, it was going to go pretty quickly, purely because of just the weight of everyone buying up here, all the amount of stops that would have been sitting down there somewhere. Um, but we're on this zone. It's going to need us to break this 3460s area, push down to the 61.8 fib and uh, maybe the 134 area. But you know where the main resistance is likely to be sitting now. You get a move up here and it holds. And uh, that's going to encourage people to get into short. So decent break. That's why I love looking for break trades in moves like this. When you've had a decent amount of support over a good period of time, you know the chances are that when you get a break, it's going to have some legs on it. Um, another one, keeping a BDI on, um, dollar China. And uh, we haven't quite had another move down to this area, but we're still holding this zone down here. I'm, I am... Again, contemplating whether this is another potential stretch trade uh, to look at maybe longs there as we confirm that area, 710s, 709s, 708s. Uh, so I'm looking at that one. But it does look pretty weak. Again, largely dollar driven. So if the dollar does turn, uh, this one could be another one I'm looking to get uh, long. Again, 
Uh, Kay, I'm going to bet it over to you, well, mate. Because uh, it wants to be uh, long dollar China when when there's articles on Bloomberg saying that a trillion dollars may flow out of uh, China if the if if the Chinese uh, come back uh, with a with a vengeance. Ha ha! I mean, Ryan, what are you doing? I didn't want to mention it, but now you speak about dollar China, I just couldn't hold couldn't hold back. Oh, I'm going to sit on the end. If, Bloom, if Bloomberg are pumping it, then uh, I need to ignore it. Anyway, yep, uh, right, let's uh, punch it over to you, mate, in two seconds. Oh, all my buttons have changed around. There we go. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to um, repeat uh, just one thing um, that, that you're telling, and then I'll look at some, some different things. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still short as well. And... Um, you know, I mean, UK exceptionalism, it's, a, it's of course, half a joke. Um, but I just wanted to remind everybody that if you look at the UK data versus European data, for instance, they have been continuously doing better over the past months, okay? So there, there is, uh, we, we've had this, this like spike higher, big risk off, uh, you, you, you name it. Um, but then the market turned around and, and really was uh, was looking at data. Yes, we know that there's a risk in, uh, in in for the budget coming up, but that's still a month away, right? Um, and also, I would uh, like to point out that the market has been repricing some expectations for the Bank of England. So we find it back. Don't don't go blindsided on the Bank of England expectations, but the move that we saw in yields. And I'm just going to show you one little one here. And that is the the the, the ten year um, sterling yields have been creeping up. Okay, they have been creeping up. So the market has been uh, um, trading the sterling also on the better side, and I think that has to do with the data crunching the numbers. We know that Starmer has been moaning and groaning about uh, the holes that uh, his predecessors left and, and everything, but then the market turns around and says, like, wait a minute. I mean, the numbers perhaps not 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 showing. Um, as bad a picture. So the sterling has been uh, has been a currency that, in my opinion, has been has been now doing uh, doing much better. It has been uh, uh, before as well. Before we had the uh, the major blip, and now the market has just picked up on where it left before that uh, big big scare in uh, in in risk and uh, uh, well, yeah, all things risk really. Um, I do think that before we get the budget, unless there is some repricing to be done, unless the data turn negative, there is a chance that we are going to technically, uh, it's just a line, right? But there is a chance that we end up somewhere half uh, half 80 trees uh, before uh, we, um, we we start to rethink what, uh, what, what to do in Sterling. And I do think that the rethinking in Sterling will perhaps, and we were talking about that with Ryan as well in the room this morning, the rethinking will perhaps have to be done on that autumn budget because we can we never know what Reeves is, is really going to come up with, what kind of uh, tax hikes also uh, could be in the pipe. So then we will need to rethink, but that's more of a more uh, medium term uh, consideration. In the meantime, we've seen those yields higher. And also attached to yields. And um, we know that the market has been killing off its uh, carry trades and uh, um, the, the, the real high yielders have not been doing well, although we could argue that stuff like rent, for instance, um, is actually doing a, a, a lot better. Uh, the only one really, really undergoing the laws of gravity has been the Mexican peso. But if you look at the, the, the global yield sphere and especially the majors, Sterling is actually not too bad a yielder. And if you consider, and that is probably why we are seeing these kind of price actions as well and these and these kind of moves into sterling, if you consider that the US is turning around um, or starts to turn around, people are adjusting their books and sterling, if you also then look at the equity markets, is a beneficiary. It's, it is a usually... When the dollar goes down, it's it's an accelerated euro, as we've already been mentioning, and Ryan also said a few minutes ago. But it's all, it also, if you look at risk, equity markets are on the whole doing pretty well. Um, yeah, we saw we see setbacks and we see up and down in the max seven, whatever. But the, if you look at this as a, as a whole, um, it's doing well. Sterling is a risk positive currency as well, and it's a and it, and it's a relative high yielder. So there is. 
there are enough reasons for now compared to the risks that sterling is doing is doing well and may actually continue to do to do well and i'm thinking about end of month already and uh, etc cetera, etc cetera. so those are the the some of the reasons why um i'm also still short euro sterling because of and because of the data the divergence okay all right cable then i know that brand always lo loves to look at the cable and we need to go back on a bit of a wider time frame and um, there is a bit of activity going on in um up around 132, three quarters, 133 if we get there. Um, as I said yesterday on face, there's a potential, but we don't see it now, but there's a potential for, um, and we know tomorrow value date, end of month, there is potential for a little bit of a setback here, but I do think that for, towards the end of the month, we could actually go and uh, tickle those levels. Of course, if you look at the speed of it now, we could be there in three hours, but um, I, I do think there is a potential to go and visit a bit uh, a bit higher in uh, in the cable still before the month is over. All right, um, give me anywhere below one thirty one forty down to one one thirty one. I, I think it's uh, we we are already going to find uh, plenty of buyers there. Um, okay, I know that a lot of people are always asking about what's going on in gold. Well. Gold is not following that dollar move too much anymore, right? So despite uh, the, uh, the 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 heightened geopolitical risk, uh, whether it be the Middle East, whether it be in uh, in in Ukraine Russia affairs, uh, gold is not following the moves anymore. So I've decided to to really screw back on what I bought again um, the other day and um, just wait, wait uh, for what's going to happen. Now we know that there's now literally virtually 30 bucks of people could say uh, support, but, but equally, I think if we get down below uh, 2494, we could have a, like a revisit down there too. Um, so there is a bit of a risk to revisit there, but let's look at where we are. And, and I would now say, let's look at where we are at the end of the month. I, I, I think that if there's really, like the models say, and they don't really model metals, but we know that clearly at the, for the end of the month, we do have metals uh, moving every month, okay? There is a there is a potential for, for going the last gasp higher, but in the, in the shorter term, I'm thinking that a lot of people are potentially already in position and just waiting for what's, uh, for what's uh, happening now, because we couldn't advance more. So I am quite cautious on uh, what's happening in gold right now, okay? Not not being blindly long anymore. Not too many reasons to be uh, to be short of it, but it, it is there is a bit of a risk for a, re, uh, for a remake of this one, I think, right now. Silver painting roughly, roughly the same picture, still tough to, to get through 30 and stay above 30. Although we're hanging just below, it's a little bit like gold, different speed, of course, in uh, in those metals, different liquidity as well. But um, this is what I'm keeping a close eye on. So I'm not adding, I'm, I'm just seeing what happens uh, towards the end of the week. I've got my long term still on, but I'm, I was thinking that if I see a move higher, uh, if that's end of month driven, I may uh, unleg, I may un sell a few more out and then go to just a skeleton or base position, um, as uh, as I call it. Okay. Um, what else? If you guys want to to look at something, uh, just give us uh, give me a, a shout. Okay. Um, as I was saying, the rand is one that that relatively benefits uh, from uh, what's going on in the dollar as well. Uh, we are still below the triangle. Try to get back above, but that was that was rejected really, um, pretty um strongly if the end of month is as expected i don't know how much there is to do in the emerging market but i would not rule out to to get a revisit of uh, what happens here you know um it, it's just looking like uh, especially with the expectations on the dollar um it's just looking a bit fragile to me if we can't retake those uh, high net 17s it looks a bit uh, vulnerable um smp S&P is, uh, is, is 
it's big. There's not too much reasons to be to be short of it, right? Um, and and especially if the market expects, uh, yeah, Michael. Um, especially if the market expects the Fed to go uh, to go ahead. Um, interestingly, uh, actually, interestingly, is that the uh, Fed balance sheet roll off um, did not show too much of it uh, the last time they they reported. So. That is perhaps an additional um, factor behind the uh, the S and P relative strength is um, is that for as long as you keep more liquidity in the system, um, you you are in the you are in the pin the uh, the equities right levels. Look at uh, for a start of it uh, fifty five ninety draw, and then I'm I would say here uh, fifty five seventy down to fifty five and a half. There should be should be your support incoming if we see a setback, and then watch out if we break uh, if we break those prior highs because then uh, this is uh, probably heading for uh, people are talking about six thousand right, but uh, one step at a time probably uh, headed for fifty eight if we get um, if we get uh, that that break here. All right, that's uh, what I see on the S and P right now. The dollar mix is um, the thing is. Huh. It's a relatively important little level here around 1960, 1970, and then back up to 20. Um, there's not a lot of positives in the mix uh, right now, okay? Um, yeah, Scheinbaum uh, is trying to appoint a minister to um, to take care of Pemex, but then we have seen those those Pemex numbers are absolutely awful for, for right now, and um Mix is one that is. Uh, we've also seen the data not being uh, not being that brilliant. So the mix is one that um, is a bit your um, trading the dollar, but in an accelerated uh, fashion. So if the dollar goes uh, goes down, mix is going down with it, you know. And uh, and especially looking at some of those mix crosses, they they really are not doing uh, not doing very well. So. For as long as that goes on, I think any setbacks here, um, 1920, 1900, um, you're, you're, you're probably going to find support for potential retest uh, up here, okay? We need positives um, to, to get back into the mix. And it is, it is possible that we get those positives once we will have the handover for Scheinbaum. So, but that's not a month away, Michael, okay? Um, it, we, we don't know what I, what what I'm I'm low and uh, and uh, Shinebaum will decide in the meantime. But it, I I think we may have to wait for positives until October in uh, in the mix if we are going to get uh, some. Now Kiwi Cat, whoa, that's an interesting one. I've actually never looked at Kiwi Cat to be honest, Barbara. Uh, so that's going to be a first. Oh, actually, I did. Um, Triangle, triangle. Um, I, I, the the kiwi is still uh, is still relatively strong. I the cat seems to be back on the on the oil bus for a, a while now as well. Um, I don't know. I really I, it's not one of my favorite pairs. But uh, if you get up to 84, 70, 85, the figure, pay attention. I don't know which side of the coin you are uh, on. And uh, we're turning around the the somewhere I'd call this 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 is a bit of a traffic zone uh, we were in so a bit neutral here. Um, I don't know about uh, about Kiwi. Kiwi is still looking still looking relatively strong in caddies as well right now. But um, I don't know. Um, really, I have no strong feeling on that one. Looking at this picture, to be to be fair. Um, no, I'm I'm not going to say much on this, uh, Barbara. I, I I don't know what you're thinking about it. If you can uh, tell me in a few words what what you're looking at, that would be great. Um, as I said, 84, 70, 85, the figure. That's going to be uh, a bit of a zone. And then on the downside, uh, you're looking at probably somewhere around 82, three quarters, and uh, and 82, 82, the figure. If it starts to come uh, to come back down. Um, general feeling, as I said, Kiwi is still strong. Um, data are um, average. I'm not going to say that they are um, 
weakening too much, but uh, they are um, looking. You're looking to buy, okay? Looking to buy Kiwi Cat, okay? Um, let's have a quick look at what's happening in the dollar cat. So we've broken down on the dollar cat. Um, we're around a bit of a level here, um, if you ask me, in, uh, in the dollar cat. Um, let's try and freshen that up a little bit. What's happening on the daily here? Um, yeah, dollar cat still has a bit, it has a bit of a hole uh, be, below here. If we if we start to break, uh, okay, one thirty four, one thirty four thirty, one thirty three seventy seventy five. Um, if you see a, a, a set of in a, a set of in the dollar cat perhaps down to one thirty three forty, then look where your your kiwi cat is at and where your kiwi dollar is at. Um, because Ryan was showing the kiwi dollar is uh, sixty two and a half and stuff. I think you you have to look at you have to look at both the dollar pairs to to form a, a better idea on the on the kiwi cat. That's the best I can uh, I can say about that uh, right now, uh, Barbara. Because I don't have a very strong idea. And if you look at the price action, we are we are like kind of going up and down. Um, but if you think about Canada picking up a bit of weakness um, sooner or later, look also at the uh, oil if oil starts to turn around. And oil, talking about it, we are, um, well, we went relatively close to the um, 200 uh, DMA on uh, on gold, uh, on oil, sorry, and then uh, just above 78 uh, bucks. That, I think, is going to be a relatively uh, important zone here because we have seen most of the big, big spikes that we saw in, in, in oil found resistance at some point. And then we started to come back. Okay, SPR has been filling up uh, reserves as well in uh, in smaller amounts. Then we have the geopolitical risk, of course. But every time we get up uh, to to reasonable levels here, and we can see that here, 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 um, we we tend to find uh, tend to find offers, and then gradually start to come uh, come down again. And that may be some guide as well to uh, to what's happening in. Uh, in the Canadian dollar, perhaps. And with that, Ryan, I'm done. Back over to you, my friend. Thank you very much, mate. Um, I do want to grab the uh, screens back <clears throat> quickly, because just while uh, Kay was talking about cable, uh, I was having a little look around. I want you guys and girls to do some homework, um, because what I want you to do is, if you've got charts that you use, I want you to, to get another one, a copy one, and keep it fairly blank. Um, the reason being, while Kay was talking, I'm looking at some of these wider charts, monthlies, and we've got a lot of moving average action happening here at the moment. Um, just taking cable on the weekly, uh, we've had this move above the 200. Um, that's an area that you want to be looking at if we manage to get support. <clears throat> what you tend to find with these larger moving averages, is it, it does respect it quite a lot. You know, you get a bit of messing around, then when you're above, it holds it. Um, and you get these little bit of action now. Obviously, you can get some big spikes through this. So what you want to do with this is add it in with your shorter time frames thereafter. So keep an eye on this, you know, like the 128.70, which was a big level on the way up, as you can see there. So match this in um, with some of your levels on your short termers. The reason I'm saying do this is because we're, particularly for some of these weekly and monthlies, we're getting in to some of these levels that we haven't tested for quite some time um so you can see we've got a bit of a confluence the 55 and the 100 if we get above that which we haven't been properly since way back in 2008 so if we manage to push above that and hold it and we're close to closing the month above it that could be a very strong support point into there and the 55 um so there's a lot of these now we've seen some these legs up, we're seeing quite a few pairs. We're getting into the zone of some of these bigger moving averages, uh, and you need to pay attention to them. As I say, plot the levels, know them. So if they match some of your shorter term levels, it's a bit of confluence to trade against if we're seeing some of these big ranges breaking. Okay, so that's your homework for today. Get yourself some nice clean charts, very little tech on it. Go for the bigger, wider tech and see where your big levels are, are popping up and uh, use them to match off with your short-term charts. 
And on that note, we shall call it a day. Thank you very much. Um, we'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good one, everybody. Cheers, Kate. Cheers, mate. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.